So we start up again and tonight we're going to encompass three chapters, 7, 8 and 9. Our last look at this was chapters 5 and 6 when the outstanding figure was that of Constantine who emerged and we saw that he was in a massively historical figure and he made great difference in the Roman Empire and he actually declared the Roman Empire to be Christian although it was so mixed up with all sorts of other beliefs that the true believers couldn't stay but there that's a great thing that he did and so we get to go to chapter 7 now and the trace through the book is continued by highlighting this in the next interspersed vision of the kingdom in chapter 7 verse 9 after this I beheld and a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands we can't ever think well we didn't realize the sort of kingdom this was going to be it's it's insistent one after the other we're getting these wonderful visions this is what God wants us to know and the people down through the ages to keep looking at and here's another one now they're clothed with white robes and palms now why and what would be the point of saying they've got palms in their hands it's a vast number a vast number, not limited to 144,000. Now, some people say it's 144,000, but no. 144,000 is a symbolic number in Revelation. It stands for a mighty multitude that nobody knows except God who are to be there. But here's a picture of them. They are drawn from all nations and languages, clothed in white and holding these palms. And what's the point of these palms? It's a connection back to the Old Testament scriptures. You see how often the Bible total comes into this because the Feast of Tabernacles is tied up with these palms. And in it, Israel is told, rejoice before Yahweh our Lord for seven days. And that shows that what these feasts are about. This is all about rejoicing in the kingdom. That's what it's about. From whence had they come, this great people? They had come out of great tribulation, the 14th verse. Pressure, this means. And many of them had been actually put to death for their beliefs. Why had they been selected? Because they had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's why they were selected. And as a result, they dwell in his temple. And they are sitting on the throne. They shall dwell among them. And so therefore they are going to be rulers in the kingdom. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light them or any heat. Here is another prediction of the finality and detail of God's kingdom on earth. Thousands of years before it happens beforehand and with certainty. Its purpose again is to comfort all true believers who would look at it and believe it through times of tribulation and pressure, sometimes in the midst of great suffering. And in chapter 8, a new phase in the history of Rome opens after the work of Constantine. Many of the disagreements that had been in the emperor were calmed and there was comparative peace in the empire, which lasted for about 15 years. And this is picked up amazingly in the 8th chapter in the first verse, when the record says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven. Well, what is silence in heaven? Well, heaven is the place where the ruling powers are. And where Constantine was, that was heaven and there was silence. Why was this high silence? Because a lot of the bickering and wars which had been brought about were not no longer because of what Constantine had done. About half an hour, and if you work that out in Revelation time, that's about 15 years. And aside about rather symbols used in Revelation, the word heaven, just to make the point, refers to the position of the ruling powers on earth. For example, in the sixth chapter, the heavens depart. A, a woman gives birth to a son in what in heaven, where God is. And again, 12 and uh, verse 7, war flares out in heaven, if you look at it. Did it really in heaven? No, because it, heaven is where the ruling power is on the earth. Chapter 8, verse 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now, I want to pause here just to make sure that this is a most important juncture when the trumpets come into it. Because having seen the upgrade of the wonderful things that the Roman Empire did and all the things that Constantine had done, 
Now we've come to a new phase and the trumpet marks a warfare, a crucial turning back. The beginning of the downfall of the empire is signalled here. The first four trumpet blasts presage four major attacks on the western third of the Roman Empire by marauding tribes of barbarians. Now it was predicted and written down in AD 96 and it started happening 400 years later and here it is. The events are recorded by Gibbon in the decline and fall and he says in 410 a daring attack by the Goths on Rome caused it to fall for a brief period. This also happened in 455 and in 476 the barbarian Odoacer became leader taking Rome and the major part of the Italian men. It fell. The Western Roman Empire was dead as a result of those four trumpet judgments. The 17th century writer Joseph Mies recorded the following. He says, the fourth trumpet, having advanced a little farther, proceeded to take away entirely the light of Rome majesty in the city of Rome. The emperor in the east remained. In the west, the head of the churches began to fill the power vacuum and emerged as the leading figure. Some 130 years later, an eyewitness says this of Rome in AD 609, Rome is fallen, the streets are blocked with filth, the emperor far off in Constantinople has other concerns. The church is the one institution left and is now flexing its imperial muscles, that is to say its political strength, not only to do with spiritual things. And so we see how the church began to come out having lost the central emperor from Rome itself then the papacy began to take over and actual history adds to the details of scripture. And in AD 610, a most important decree was issued in this regard, which said that the see of the blessed Peter the Apostle, which is the Pope in Rome, should be head of all the churches. And so the Pope then rose to an amazing situation. And although notionally constituted under a single head resulted from the decree, East and West were together for a little while but began after prayer to go their separate ways and after over 400 years what's called the Great Schism took place which remains to this day as between the Roman Catholics and the others of that faith. In chapter 9 the fifth angel sounds verse 1 and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit to him it points to a person. And verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of, the f out of the pit. For what did the smoke stand? Verse 3, And there came up out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And so we have a picture here of one in great power who has a key and is able to uh, multiply great teeming armies in the 7th century and turning, turning to the, the historical record, we're able to see that this actually stands for the rise of Muhammad. In this sense, he fell from the heaven to the most exalted place on earth. And Muhammad declared war on Trinitarians with a large army of some 150,000 Muslims, as the record says, like locusts upon the earth. And together with his successors, the Saracens, he made great inroads against them, both in the Western and Eastern Roman empires. And the sixth angel sounded, and this was a signal for an attack by a large Turkish force which defeated Constantinople. In 1453, there's one of those axial dates overcoming the Eastern Roman Empire. Now, we have had to go through some very detailed history there. You don't have to go into detail, but you can look into it more to see how these things absolutely tie up.